awesome alpha awesome alpha is incoming on this video here we go we're going to talk about what i believe is a massive sleeping giant in cryptocurrency ada boys this ecosystem we'll talk about got me very excited about its potential it's responsible for the biggest move i've had to date in this space a near 70x on a token called track and i think there's a lot more where that came from so uh thanks for trusting me on this text we'll get text in here in a second along with our guest welcome into the show and we'll get that guest on here in, in just a second. I, I just have a couple of questions for you to set this up, okay? What do we need more of in Cardano, okay? It's liquidity, right? It's one of the major topics going around the ecosystem right now. Where is the most liquidity in crypto? It's Bitcoin, okay? It's it's already over there. We can wait for it on Cardano or we can diversify a little bit, okay? And, and, and let me ask you this as well. What if people were building out DeFi and NFTs and liquid staking, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? W what if they were building out an ecosystem like that on Bitcoin where all that liquidity is like other um, major altcoin L1s? And what if I told you they already are? You're just not hearing much about it. And, and maybe because they aren't paying your favorite content creator to shill you and then dump you, which, by the way, is another reason to be super bullish about this ecosystem. And, and joining us now here on the channel is one of the foremost YouTube experts on this Bitcoin DeFi matter believes he's identified a portfolio that can outperform crypto gaming and many others. He is the host of the YouTube channel. Call me hunch. It is hunch himself right here with the Ada boys and a, uh, it's a good afternoon to you uh, on this Super Bowl Sunday hunch. Big fan of the show. How the heck are you, buddy? I'm great. I'm great. It's good to be here. Uh, I love doing these uh, interviews. They're a lot of fun. So, yes. Well, it, it, it's so much fun for us to learn, Tags. We've been doing it as, you know, the work that we can to tell folks about, you know, everything that's exciting uh, on Cardano. But, dude, I'm telling you, wait till you hear about what what Hunch has been studying and and what is, uh, you know, laying out there with, with just, uh, you know, a few click, clicks of the mouse. This is cool. OK, so, you know, the thing I, I really love about your channel and and, uh, you know, it, you know I, I got lucky on track. Then I'd heard, uh, you know, BRC20 on uh, on uh, another show and I, I just randomly and I was literally playing it like a casino and I got super lucky. So I was like, man, I got to find out more about this. And that's when I, I, I put that in the YouTube search engine and, and found your channel. But you're tracking these things much more carefully. What are the the latest things in this ecosystem that has you excited? And what are the like the, the first things that people need to know they need to go out and look for and put in their wallet? Yeah, well, the first thing you definitely need in your wallet is Bitcoin. Okay, so start there. If you're a newbie, you got to start with Bitcoin. Um, the new and interesting things, uh, there's a lot, actually, uh, depending on who you talk to. I'm mostly concerned with the stacks and the track ecosystems, the BRC20s, how those are developing. Um, the, the cool thing about this space is uh, if you've been around for a while, you're basically reliving what happened last cycle on Ethereum but kind of with like from ground zero, uh, all this liquidity. So you get these massive spikes in prices over, you know, a month or two rather than like a whole bull market period. So in my mind, we've essentially had a bull market in BRC twenties, like track ghosty cash, um, a few of the other DeFi things in stacks. Right. I mean, they've gone, uh, 10, 20, 30 X's, right. You said track went 70 X. I was talking about track under 20 cents, I think. Yeah. Um, and, and I knew, I knew, uh, track had to be a winner just because I read the chain link white paper last cycle, right. When it got on Coinbase and it was already at a billion dollar market cap and, and, and like that, something clicked. Like if I saw chain link at a billion, somebody saw it at a million. Right. And now I'm seeing it again. So that's what got me so excited. Um, and then also people are, are once they get that 10 X, they jump out. I think that's, that, that's a mistake. I, I feel like it's cooking and it's stewing and, and you got to give it a chance. Right. I mean, uh, chain link probably did the same thing, right? It, it went up it consolidated and then it went to, you know, 10, 20 billion, whatever the market cap top was. So, uh, very excited about everything. BRC 20 track stacks. So on and so forth. Certainly, I, I want to take profits and get my initial out, but the initial is just such a small percentage. And I, I'm with you because of the uh, tremendous amount of money that's sitting in the Bitcoin ecosystem. I'm in this to free my family, you know, 
Yeah. Why would I want to get out after a 10 X? It's, it's the potential of what if this grows maybe three times bigger than what the Ethereum ecosystem is, which is what the math would suggest that, that that's possible. Right. Right. Um, I agree. I, I think the math suggests it's possible. I think we need to be open to the possibility that it doesn't do a, a, a three times the size of Ethereum, right? Like you said, you got the Cardano space, you've got the Ethereum space, right? So it doesn't necessarily uh, mean it's going to be like a one to one ratio here. Um, but I do think it's so low still, right? I mean, track is sitting at a under a hundred million uh, and the graph, which is kind of like the equivalent or the chain links, right? Are over a billion, right? So uh, I think I think there's so much room to run, um, and and you know everyone's in a different spot. You know if you got your 20x and, and you're happy and you want to get out and you want to go live your life, uh, that's up to you. So uh, no judgment here. <laughs> hey, if you start with enough money, a, a 20x <laughs> yeah. might be enough to free your family from the system for for that's generations. Right. That's right. That's what it's all about: getting out, <laughs> getting out of the system, compounding that capital. So we, we have Bitcoin in a wallet. Is there a, a best wallet we should be looking at? I have the leather wallet, which was Hero, and then I have a Unisat wallet. Uh -huh. And it, it, it's different because these markets are illiquid, right? But we, we, we want to get a Bitcoin in there and we want to get probably some stacks in there. Uh -huh. And then we want to go shopping. How, how do you identify what are the best opportunities right now in this ecosystem? And, and what would you be looking to add to your, your bags right now? <laughs> okay, in theory, so in theory. Like and th th everything's from a theoretical perspective yes, here. Uh, I, and I, I always put that disclaimer because just because I'm saying something, it doesn't mean I'm, it's like real time, right? There's a delay, right? New information pops up all the time. I don't want you to, you know, be living on every word I say. So, uh, that's why I say that. But, uh, two questions there. The first one, I would be using Xverse. Uh, the, uh, the UI is absolutely flawless. It tells you the inputs and the outputs. So, uh, it's harder to get your wallet drained. Uh, which is a huge problem in the space. So you can see exactly what's exiting, what, exactly what's entering the wallet. Uh, it identifies rare sats for you so you don't accidentally spend them uh, because a rare sat could be you know worth over $200,000 depending on the type. Uh, so Xverse, absolutely recommend Xverse. Um, and what was the second question? The second tail end, I get so focused. I you know, you, you, so we get Bitcoin in our wallet, we get some stacks in our wallet, right? What do we do next? Mm. What do you want what to do next? Back? Right. Like Dico from you. Thank you for the five or six X we got on Dico so far, by the way, Hunch. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going, I think it's going a lot more. And uh, uh, so, it, right. Identify something you, you're passionate about, right? Don't spread yourself too thin, right? Dico is, is dense, right? There's a developer behind Dico. Get to know who he is. I actively talk to these people who make these projects, right? So the guy who makes Dico, Dico is Philip. He's also the guy between uh, behind stacking Dow, which is liquid stacking. Uh, of stacks, right? Which is the equivalent on Ethereum is Lido Finance, I believe, uh, which is over a, a billion dollar market cap. So the goal for me there would be try to get an airdrop. Uh, there's a few opportunities in stacks to try to get airdrops under stacking Dow. There's one called Velar Finance and Bitflow Finance, right? I think all these are going to be huge and have little niche areas. Um, and then there's also things like Merlin, which, you know, I'm not a huge fan of, but you can try to get an airdrop. Uh, under uh, Bitcoin, I think it's an Ethereum L2, but some people think it's a Bitcoin L2. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunity, but I would like pick one, right? So, uh, you know, I wouldn't be bouncing around from Ethereum to Avalanche to Cardano to, right? Pick one or two and, and focus because um, as you, you've been watching my channel, like I, I actively compare like what these are guys, these guys are saying about their gaming portfolios and what we're doing in DeFi. And we're like absolutely blowing them out of the water. They're talking about three X's to seven X's by April. And we've done a uh, hundred X in the last three months. So uh, focus, <laughs> focus, focus, focus. So what do you think about Alex? Okay. It's, mm -hmm. it's like, it's a Bitcoin on DeFi play. I got some Alex. I've staked it. It gets me eligible for these launch pads. Um, I haven't like participated in any of that yet, but I, I'm kind of sitting over here thinking, do, do, does Hunch think that's a good way to get in this Bitcoin DeFi game? Right, right, right. I, I absolutely think it, it's a great way. It's kind of like um, the mutual fund of, of Bitcoin DeFi. They do launch pads, they do staking, they do uh, uh, farming and, and all that, that good stuff. It's at you know roughly a $200 million market cap, uh, whereas Dyko is at like a $13 million. So it's all about risk portfolio. Right. Right. How much how much risk are you willing to take on? Right. The downside in Alex is probably less, but the upside in Dico is probably a lot more. So 
Gotcha. That's where I say focus, right? I can't tell you where you are, right? I can just tell you what I'm looking at and, and what it, it is a good place. So Alex, absolutely. I think the optics are fantastic. Uh, the vent, I think there's going to be venture capital money behind it. I think TradFi is going to get behind it. And I really look for things people aren't talking about, right? I yes. mean, if, if you're not talking about it and you're sitting at a $200 million market cap and your fundamentals are fantastic, your website uh, looks beautiful, your UI is working, right? There's some bugs and stuff that can be fixed, I think, right? Obviously, but uh, that that's where I'm going to gravitate towards. That's and, uh, and I do that because I've been in the space for seven years, right? And I've missed all those opportunities. So I, I'm changing uh, uh, kind of my the way I do it. So absolutely, Alex is a great way to get involved in the stacks and Bitcoin ecosystem. Hands down. In, in those seven years, you, you see sometimes everybody's talking about something and it's good. And then sometimes everybody's talking about something and it's bad, like Satoshi EVM. Mm, so, you know, yeah. when, when, when I see nobody talking about the, the Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem, but everything adds up to it being exactly what they tell us we should be looking for. Mm -hmm. It's just fishy. It, yeah. it, it doesn't add up to me. And that that makes me more bullish on it because, you know, eventually um, it's going to grow or it'll go viral on its own. And that's the best right. kind of viral. You know, the right. things that don't need the the artificial stimulation. Uh, text, we're 10 minutes in. Haven't heard from you yet on the video. How you doing over there as you're taking this in? Man, I'm taking it all in. I got my uh, my notepad over here with the pen. I, had, I didn't have a <laughs> pen ready, so I had to take a notepad. Um, so, Hunch, you know, you are a brilliant, brilliant man. Uh, tremendous amount of value here on this subject, and I can make one promise to you. Uh, I will be in your DMs to learn more. Uh, <laughs> my my partner, G, over here has uh, you know, sprinkled little bits and pieces uh, as we've gotten to know each other over, over this journey over the past couple of weeks. Uh, yeah. But uh, the, the little tidbit or I guess the absolute bomb that he dropped on me right before this email or this, this uh, interview of a yep. 70 X uh, yeah. text. Yeah. Text, text likes gains. And, uh, and I also love learning and, you know, Bitcoin is something I have a lot of fundamental knowledge about, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, these, these DeFi plays, um, uh, I got a lot of room to grow, a lot of room to learn. And it found like, uh, sounds like I've just found my, uh, my Bitcoin Yoda. As well, call you. Uh, uh, I uh, I appreciate okay. that. Yeah, <laughs> get it get it free before I start like a, a Patreon or whatever else these guys are. A hey, private Discord. Yeah, so. <laughs> Just, I'll be the first yeah, customer. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I'll be number two. <laughs> we we do like to get a crypto origin story. Okay, mm -hmm. and and from watching your show, piecing together, I believe you have a finance degree. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I got a finance degree. And and what do you think of that world? Uh, you know, I, I kind of made a mistake. I had, I had a finance degree and, uh, I went to get my doctor in physical therapy. So I left finance. And as I have been in physical therapy, I found that I go back to finance more than I do physical therapy. Like I got my own business. I'm, I'm so deep in crypto. It's not even funny, right? I'm on my phone 24 seven. It's funny. My stepmom's like, I want to day trade crypto. I'm like, Oh God, this is a top signal. I'm like, you can't uh -oh. do this. I, I spend <laughs> uh -oh. all day on the phone. 24 hours a day, you know, uh, seven days a week. So a lot of people just think we're lucky, but like, I, I mean, I am studying this stuff nonstop all day, every day. Um, so I love finance and I'm back in it with crypto baby. So, yeah. So, so you leave finance, you get into physical therapy. What were you in crypto already? And you said seven years ago. So you're coming up on three quarters of a decade here in, in, in crypto. What first got you into to blockchain, if you will? Um, I think, I think I started trading and I was a, a senior in high school, uh, stocks. Um, and then the 2008 financial crisis happened. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that kind of took me aback, you know, it didn't really affect me too much, but it always kind of like stuck in my head. Uh, you know, the system uh, that we live in. And then, uh, after college, some guy was like, yeah, I just bought a truck. You know, I've been trading this Bitcoin thing. It's at a thousand a coin or whatever. I'm like a thousand a coin. That's ridiculous. Like what? It's like, what are you talking about? And then I looked at it and I read about it and I had that finance background. And, uh, and then subsequently I had a lost, uh, I call it the decade, but it was really just four years of being a Bitcoin maxi, okay. uh, where I kind of just threw away insane amounts of gains on Cardano on Ethereum. Right. Uh, so I feel like a lot of people have to go through that to, to realize 
like how it should be done and how you actually make money. Uh, not to say I lost money. I did okay in Bitcoin, right? But I didn't make, you know, millions and millions of dollars like some of these people. So, yeah, I did the opposite. I lost a bunch of money on complete shit coins and <laughs> learned the value of Bitcoin. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, that's one of the reasons I feel like I'm so successful right now is, yeah, I didn't make life changing gains four years ago, but I kept my head above water. Right. And I, yep. I stayed liquid. I held, I hodled. Right. And now everyone's like, how are you doing this? It's like, well, I've been holding Bitcoin for seven years, like I, I have the opportunity to take risks, right? So uh, just build that base if you're not even at the base is, is my suggestion too, so. Okay, so I guess next topic here, I keep hearing about TAP protocol. Mm -hmm. What's the current state of TAP? Do we need to have a bag? How hard is it to get one? You know, how hard is it to sell it? You know, right. where, where are we going with TAP? Right, uh, well, that's why my Twitter is so good because uh, I really think about this from like a future perspective. And I say, you know, where is this going? Um, I talk about, you know, what I think should uh, develop in this space. For example, Ghosty Cash, they're kind of like a bridge. Uh, I would make a suggestion like Ghosty Cash should make a tap exchange, right? There's no real tap exchange uh, as of yet. Uh, it's coming. I only know about these things because I get into the discords and uh, uh, the telegrams and uh, and that's where that like on the phone 24 hours a day comes from right i mean i am in there reading every line uh what the developer is saying benny the dev on track which is yeah. uh, the developer who's making tap right so uh what do i know about tap i i know that it's a huge opportunity and uh, to to throw that away uh, just because we've had like a, a huge run up in track and, you know, you should get out. Right. I mean, there's, this is just getting started in my opinion. Right. Uh, we're not at the Bitcoin happening. We're not at the macro uh, top cycle for lowering interest rates. Like we, uh, it would be insane to me to completely just exit unless, you know, obviously you can do that with the amount of money you have. So um, tap is, is the number one thing I'm watching hands down uh, how you get a bag. I'll let you know as soon as I know <laughs> Okay. The, the airdrop is coming to track holders. So that's the easiest way as of right now. And has that snapshot been taken? I do not believe so. I think it's February 28th, the snapshot. So get your track off exchanges, get in a Xverse or a leather wallet, so on and so forth. So, you know, I bought track through the Alex. Um, what is that? A beta decks that they have. Mm -hmm. And that's a little bit different than some of the other wallets, right? Is it on a different, yeah, um, so I don't think you're going to get the drop if you do it okay. through Alex, because okay. I think it's kind of like a, a bridged to like a synthetic yes. kind of asset on stacks yes. okay. or, or whatever else they use. So it's not the the nascent BRC20 uh, token. So that's can what I, I would be going for. Can uh, I, can, do you know if there's a way I can bridge that over or do, do I need to buy? buy no, I believe you can bridge it. You can bridge it to stacks or you can bridge it off of stacks. I could be wrong. I, I've okay. only bridged it. No, you're right. Stacks. I can't. So, so if I bridge it to the leather wallet, I'm good there. Right. That's I believe so. Right. Uh, right. Uh, I'm not a technical expert, but that's my understanding. Okay. Of okay. Sorry to cut you off there, it, Hunch. Uh, you, you mentioned the Bitcoin having got me excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah if, if if this track move really happened from uh, you know about 25k to 48k, which is where we are today, we mm -hmm. haven't hit 50 yet, right? I haven't looked mm -hmm. in, the, in about 45 minutes, but right. Could we, ex if Bitcoin goes from like 50 to 100 for every 2X, or are we getting this kind of a move out of the ecosystem? What would be your best guess on that? Um, yeah, I have a, a little bit of a differing opinion. I, I think that Bitcoin, honestly, I think Bitcoin is not going to just do the 2 to 3X. So it's, I think it's going to go maybe like 6 to 10X. Uh, kind of like a, a, a super a, a super cycle or whatever you want to call it or a left translated move. Some of the people have talked about that. Um, that that's just my that's just one theory. Obviously, that may not happen. Um, so, uh, you know, for a two X, I, I think generally, yes, for like a track, I would expect like a ten to thirty X based on where it is now. Uh, but again, I'm just I'm just guessing, right? It, it really depends where the money moves to, where the money flows to. Uh, a lot of it is the ETH Bitcoin chart, right? Everyone's screaming, ETH Bitcoin is going to go up. ETH Bitcoin is going to go up. I still don't believe it. Uh, so if it continues to trend down, 
then I think you're probably right. We should expect these high moves in BRC twenties, uh, uh, specifically Bitcoin DeFi BRC twenties and stacks and stuff like that. If the ETH Bitcoin chart continues to go down, and and that's for a lot of reasons, right? We don't. We're not even on Coinbase yet. We're not on Binance yet. Uh, we're on like Gate.io, right? And a lot of the volume is coming from China. Uh, so when that liquidity starts coming from America and and Central America and all those other places, I think we're going to see massive moves. But uh, that that's me just being hopeful, maybe. So we'll mm-hmm. see. Okay. Speaking of that liquidity, um, you know, when I, when I'm moving around, I, I haven't found anywhere where there's like a, a proper AMM. There's or you know, are we getting close to that? Because it's like you got to sell in 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 like. I don't know what are they called tranches. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got to sell these. It's almost like you're buying and selling NFTs. You got to wait right. for somebody to bid on your bag instead of just being able to hit the sell button on market order. Where are we with that? How, how difficult is it? You know, if you're looking at at the at the market price of track right now and it says seven dollars, I can't go on and sell it for seven dollars with certainty. Maybe right. I can sell twenty of them for seven bucks and another thirty of them for right. six seventy five. It just depends on you know who's bid. Right, right. Well, I think that's what makes me so bullish too is like how yeah. underdeveloped this actually is and for the for the size of the move that we've had, right? For being yeah. just able to sell on OKX or Unisat, right? I mean, to me that's that's breathtaking. I mean, if you're not like stopping in your tracks and going, this type of move happened with no infrastructure, what type of move is going to happen when we do have the infrastructure? Um some people like Ordi Swap uh, ghosty cash is a way to trade out your track or, or whatever too. Uh, but I think it's coming. And I think Alex is really laying the groundwork with that synthetic asset, that L2, uh, uh, narrative. And I think it's, it's developing the way Ethereum wish it developed, right? Where you have the base chain and things around it are settling on it. Right. Uh, the L2 status on Ethereum is is the most confusing thing I've ever witnessed on the face of the earth. Uh, I don't understand base by Coinbase. I don't understand optimism. I don't understand Polygon. Uh, so I think Stax is doing it properly. And I, I would be really focused on that ecosystem to learn when the swapping functions are going to uh, come about. Right. And then all the Ethereum stuff seems like a little bit of grift, like already swap. Uh, I could be wrong about that. Right. It, it might be good to get exposure to those things, but uh, I would be watching stacks uh, for that and maybe tap, maybe tap. Right. So we'll see. Well, uh, I, I think when it comes to that narrative text, that's kind of where Cardano and this ecosystem have a lot in common. You know, Charles left Ethereum six, seven years ago to work on this other project because he foresaw the problems that are coming to market. Yep. Uh, you know, the, the Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem is recognizing it as well. They're getting the opportunity to build from the ground up with, mm. you know, obviously, um, you know, the the wisdom that that time has afforded them. Mm. Absolutely. And I, 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 yeah, you know, I, I don't know. I wouldn't want to be an ETH maxi right now. Maybe that's maybe that's why the price is, you know, not moving up as, as much as some of the other products out there. Okay, what else can you tell us about this BRC20 ecosystem, this Bitcoin DeFi ecosystem? A couple of days ago, you asked, is Welsh about to be listed on Coinbase? What is Welsh and is it going to be? Right. Uh, Well, obviously, that's pure speculation. I hope it's listed on Coinbase uh, during a Bitcoin bull market run. But um, Welsh is the first meme coin on Stacks. And uh, I re- I, I, what I can tell you about Bitcoin DeFi is um, what I can tell you about markets in general, right? Max Payne is uh, the way we're going. So, sorry, my camera is so close. I don't know how to change that. Uh, you go, good, man. You're looking good. <laughs> but uh, fresh uh, haircut. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. I like it. Yeah, I pre- yeah, yeah. I can tell you, you guys uh, styling yourselves. So. Um, <laughs> Okay, like I was saying, Max Payne, right? So like the Bitcoin DeFi narrative, right? I could just tell from my level of views on YouTube, right? It's like still underdiscovered, right? I I go and I uh, look at stock twits. Stacks is still the least followed kind of Bitcoin play out there, right? Whereas Cardano probably, and I'm just guessing here, probably has 100,000 people following them on stock twits. Stacks has like 1,500, right? So to me, right, uh, Max Payne for an Ethereum holder would be watching Cardano blow it out of the water, 
but max maximum pain would be stacks blowing all of them out of the water. Uh, that doesn't mean it will. That doesn't mean it, it, it. It's not good to have exposure to ETH. It's not you know. It's good to have exposure to Cardano. Uh, but to me, I'm looking for freedom, right? Like I'm looking yeah. to least amount of risk, most amount of reward, right? Uh, and I've already suffered the the Bitcoin maxing narrative while getting the least amount of risk and the least amount of reward. So now I'm trying to do the opposite uh, of what I did in the past. So uh, that's the alpha. Look for the max pain. Look look for what nobody else is looking at. Really, love that's that. What it is. Yeah, love that. I am I am agnostic when it comes to gains. Right, you know, mm -hmm. diversity uh, is the play. And you know, six seven years in the space, I've been absolutely taken to the cleaners. Uh, over the years, but <laughs> yeah. I think we're on the uh, we're on the uphill slope, moving the right direction. I do believe the bull is coming, and you know, rising tide is going to lift all boats. And uh, I just find another. Uh, I just found a new boat uh, that I need to buy, that I need to play in, which is uh, Bitcoin DeFi. So, Hunch, uh, man, I, I greatly appreciate your uh, your willingness to come on the show, man. Your expertise, uh, your knowledge knows no bounds, man. And I'll say it again. I'm going to be in those DMs. And uh, at some point, if you have to charge me, hey, it's business, brother. Business is business, <laughs> you know, free of free of emotion. Uh, right. And, you know, yeah, you know, feel free to, to holler at me so I can help you charge more. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, maybe we can get a Bitcoin Cardano thing going. You know, you Let's guys go. teach me, I'll teach you. So. Yeah, man. We'd love to. We had an Ethereum guy on the show last week, uh, you know, big NFT name. So, yeah, man, we're we're all about uh, diversity and then the community as a whole. Uh, so, again, man, greatly appreciate you, brother. Yeah, yeah. It's my pleasure, man. Absolutely. <laughs> Is there a Discord uh, uh, at Call Me Hunch on X and, and on YouTube? Where else can we get your alpha? <laughs> Nothing yet, man. I'm trying to keep it free as long as I can. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going in steps, right. Which is uh, a lot of how I invest. So I'm trying to get ad revenue on YouTube first, and then I might move into, um, discord, you know, private discord, so on and so forth. So just YouTube, uh, just X, X is really my like day-to-day -day thoughts. Uh, you know, where I see it going, uh, the, the future of Bitcoin DeFi, uh, I mention other chains sometimes, but, uh, it's mostly Bitcoin DeFi. So x is the best place really well right on brother thank you so much for your time have a beautiful sunday afternoon with uh your awesome uh, family and, yeah. and little Hunchy. yeah i appreciate that yeah i've been pretty tired so uh right on. i could get in here so appreciate right you on, guys. Dude, have a great appreciate afternoon you, brother yeah there he goes he is at call me hunch on x and youtube a great family man a cool bro and uh and just as you yeah. mentioned just a wealth of information yeah, could not have been nicer. Could not have been nicer. Uh, you know, I took notes as fast as I could, G, but uh, I'll say it for a third time. I'll be reaching out to Hunch because he yeah. has a wealth of knowledge. And uh, again, you know, opportunities abound. And and that's outside of Cardano, too. You know, I'm not afraid to say it. So you know, there's no such thing as, as learn. There's no such thing as having too much information and learning more. And I did want to add something to a comment you made early in the show, G, maybe in closing here. You said yeah. luck. And, uh, you know, I'm a great believer in luck. And I find that the harder I work, the more I have of it. And uh, yeah. luck also might be an accident that happens to the competent. So yeah. maybe it's a little bit of luck. Well, I, I was paying attention. Maybe it's a lot I, of G. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, dude, I, I guess a blind squirrel, you know, if he's hunting hard enough, that blind squirrel was hunting, dude. And, and he got one that day. And hell yeah. yeah. I've gotten uh, a, a few more here from from Hunch, so salute to him. Okay, the Ada Boy stream every Wednesday night, ten o'clock Texas time. Hit the like and sub on your way out if you don't mind. We got to get, we got to reset this though, man. The uh, did we lose you? No, we got you. The the snapshot for that track and that the airdrop coming to tap. I, what did he say? February twenty eighth. This is perfectly uh, timed, bro. Yeah, we yeah. have like two two and a half weeks to get some track in a Bitcoin or Stacks wallet. OK, and and then you'll get the tap airdrop and that's going to be, uh, you know, huge. They've been talking about that thing for months for Texan GD. Thanks for watching. Uh, remember, streaming every Wednesday night, 10 p.m. Salute.